Hello, this is Frank Young from Microsoft Technology Center in Singapore. This is Manage Azure Subscription Series Part 3, Set Up Subscriptions for Your Business. Remember in the Part 2, we talk about the IT administrator can use the directory synchronization to create the users in Azure AD so that every people who has the AD account on-premise will have the organization account in Azure AD. Now we're talking about how we sign those Azure AD with different subscription and different resources, resource groups. So think about the company scenario that we're talking about. The uh, multiple company, uh, the uh, large company may have multiple Azure subscriptions with the multiple building accounts. Well, that's the challenge. How you want to design this hierarchy system to make sure it match your business need from the subscription to the resource group to the resources. Kind of a challenge. Remember the part two we share about the Azure access permission inherited from the subscription to the resource to the resource group. But how many subscriptions you need to build? How many resource groups you need to create? How many resources put into the resource group? Those are the questions that we commonly hear from our customers. Here is some typical consideration you may think about. First, a building account. When you sign a contract with Azure, you will have the building account. Well, it depends on what's the size of a company. You are, if you are a middle or a small company, you probably one building account will be good enough. But if you are the whole holding company, you may have the hundreds of different business in a different industry. Those business may not have any relationship to each other. So those customers may, may think about have multiple building accounts for the subscription. If you think about you are the one company, you may consider to set up the multiple subscription by different business unit, or by the usage or by the project. Those are typical way that the, the people to set up the subscription, some for the chargeback, some for the security, some for the budget reason. Well, it's kind of a complex, is, let's talk about it in the next slide. In the one subscription, you can think about, you can actually orchestrate your resources by different resources group. So how did you want to set up the resource group? Very typical way is you set up the resource group by the logical usage. So it's, for example, you can create a one resource group for one applications, but we, we, after running a system for a long time, this way may be not the best recommendation. For example, we figure out maybe the using the application lifecycle will be a good way to determine whether you should a group of, a group of resources into the one resource group or separate to the different. For example, if I have an application, have the web tier and the database tier, the app tier have the same application lifecycle. The database will have a different. You probably want to upgrade the web tier, but may not frequently, but may not want to upgrade the database tier every single month. So you probably want to set up the resource group for the application tier and set up the another resource group for the database tier. Well, just to let, let you know, uh, one resource group, resource group cannot inherit it. So the one resource group cannot be a member of the other resource group. For the resource, that's much easier. Every resource is the one instance of the one specific resources. Could be VM, could be network, could be storage account, could be IP range, could be, could be applications. Now let's think about how to set up this Azure subscription. This is more challenge for the most of a company who 
first time moving to the Azure. Let's remove all the complex part of the Azure AD identity. We think about the subscription only. As we shared in the beginning, when we sign the Azure contract, typically it's a CFO to sign the contract and he can get the confirmation from Microsoft and the confirmation was sent into the CFO's email. Well, if you ask the CFO to set up the Azure subscription, will be quite a challenge for the person. Well, what we suggest is let the CFO using his email to register a Microsoft account and give the Microsoft account to the IT manager or the partner to temporary use. Don't worry about this. Remember, the Microsoft account is just for authentication in a Microsoft, nothing related with the CFO's email itself. So the CFO doesn't share their mailbox to the, uh, the IT people. They only share the Microsoft account using his uh, per company's email, but the, the, the IT people will never read the, the CFO's emails. So it's very secure. After the set up the subscription, actually CFO can change the password of uh, change the password of the um, Microsoft account and solve the problem. Now, if you look at the IT people, when they set up when the IT people have the CSO CFO's email, he can log into the Azure account administrator page to create. They are not create the account and uh, the building account is already there. And you can using that page to manage multiple building accounts together. And also they can using that page, they can sign the multiple subscription into the one building account. This subscription is based on the different department by the usage. You think about department one and department two and IT department. The service admin will be set up by the department owner. So you actually dedicate the permission for the department to control the subscription permissions. Those are the by business units. Those, the reason they set, it, set this up because it's more easily for chargeback. Every subscription will have their own report and it's very clear that how much usage you have on these subscriptions. Well, in other scenario, you may set up the subscription by the different usage for security reason. For example, you can put the production solutions, production system in the production subscriptions and the dev test system in another system, subscriptions. And the production system managed by IT manager and dev test system man subscription managed by the dev managers. Well, that's a different approach. Sometimes people even, because of the budget, they can create the pay-as-you-go subscription and they're charging to using different way to do charging, not to pre-committed the service. This is how you, you can combine a different way to different perspective to create the multiple subscription for the one company. But remember, adding more subscription doesn't adding more cost for the Azure. So a lot of customers actually create more subscription than, than they need. That's it's actually the good best practice. After you have set up the subscription, administrators can create the Azure AD in one of the subscriptions. And so the organization account will create it, synchronize with on-premise AD. Then they can bind the different subscription to authenticate through this Azure AD they created. This is how the Azure subscriptions. When you design Azure subscriptions, you may put something in your mind. First, the multiple subscription doesn't increase any cost. 
So don't limit yourself as just to put on a one single subscription. This is the worst design you want to do. So by default, you probably want to create multiple subscriptions. And something, keep something in your mind. Migrate data between the subscription are totally okay. You just have the both access for the two different subscriptions. You can copy the data from one subscription to another using the storage account. That's that's very easy. But if you want to change the resources between those different subscriptions, for example, you want to move in one VM from one subscription to another, may not that easy. Then you need to open the technical support to let the um, the technical people to uh, the Microsoft supporting people to do that. So remember, if you m copy the VM VHD from one subscription to another subscription, you can do it by yourself. If you are copy the v changing the one VM itself from one to another, you need the technical support. Is that clear? Okay. You may think about actually there is not right or wrong design for the subscriptions. In fact, you can combine all this strategy together to create a comprehensive design of the subscription to matching your business need. You want to know the real best practice in the real world? That's the first, don't use one single subscription for whole company. We see a lot of companies start like this. It's a very challenge to manage that environment. Later on, they were moving out. Second, it's very hard to design in the beginning. So a lot of customers choose an easy way. They created the multiple subscription for the different subsidiary company to run about six months to one year. Later on, they will figure out, oh, this is the best way they want to do. They can allocate the resources from one to another and recreate it. So this the after one year, they probably know how which is the best design to matching their needs. Is that fair? This is the part three of the Manage Azure subscription. After these three sessions, you probably understand how you want to set up your Azure and what type of the Azure identity you want to use, how to set up the Azure access permission using those identity, and how to set up Azure subscription for your business. 